name is Liana Levine Reisner. I'm the Network Director of Plant Powered Metro New York, which is a community-based organization that's committed to our collective health empowerment through whole food, plant-based nutrition, which is an evidence-based approach to nutrition that can prevent, treat, and even reverse chronic illness. So while we normally prefer to offer live sessions to build community around health and nutrition, we're offering this program as part of a web series during this season of COVID-19. We're really glad you've come to learn with us today and to find community despite our social distancing. Uh, and as a reminder, as you join, please, um, please mute your lines. We are going to take questions in the middle, um, only via chat and then at the end, Depending on how many people are here, we may open up the line and you can ask for questions of Anthony, but I will let you know um, how things will go at the end, depending on uh, uh, the, our numbers, as a lot of people are now joining us. Um, so without further ado, I wanna intro Chef Anthony Spino here, who is our wonderful presenter this evening, who has his own catering business. Anthony, will you say a few words about yourself and how you got into this line of work before you get started? For sure, for sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us today. And Leanna, thank you so much for uh, everything that you do and uh, everything that I've learned from all of the great uh, sessions that you've had here in New York for the last couple of years. Uh, I grew up in my family's Italian restaurant in the Midwest. Uh, uh, it was an Italian restaurant, so uh, uh, everything we cooked with uh, was meat, egg, cheese, milk, butter. Uh, and so... Um, Coming to this way of cooking, uh, it, it's been a, a big difference. Um, so I'm going to teach you how to make some classic Italian dishes uh, with some untraditional ingredients. Uh, I think that's the hardest thing is, is uh, figuring out how you're going to cook without egg, butter, cheese, and milk. But uh, uh, learning from other chefs here in New York, I figured out a way. And uh, I'm going to show you today how to make some classic Italian dishes uh, with some uh, different ingredients uh, that are easy to get. And uh, once you start learning about this way of cooking, you find out that you're really not sacrificing anything and you almost enhance uh, your lifestyle and your your uh, your food. So uh, we've got some great dishes today. And Leanna, whenever you're ready, I can start with, uh, with the recipes. Absolutely, go for it. All right, great. So uh, I think you guys have some of the recipes. Uh, you can follow along if you like. If you have any questions, again, um, I'll answer them at the end, or you can always email me. I'll make sure I give you my email address, and I'll, uh, I'll walk you through all of this uh, if you need help. And I did, if for some reason I missed some things. But the first thing we're going to make today is cashew parmesan. Uh, and we're going to need cashew parmesan for both the Italian dressing that we're making and the lasagna we're making. Uh, cashew parmesan is uh, uh, a way of making your dish uh, you uh, salty, saltier, um, and uh, you only need a couple ingredients, which I have right here. You need a Vitamix, which is a very strong blender, or or another strong blender. But we're going to start here with three fourths of a cup of cashews, and we're going to do three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Uh, for the recipes that we're doing today, you need to times this recipe by two. Uh, you don't want to put more than uh, one and a half cups of cashews in here and six tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Because of this powerful blender, you end up cooking uh, the nuts and the nutritional yeast and get it kind of lumpy, and that's not really what Parmesan cheese is. So uh, we're just gonna pulse this a few times. Uh, there is a half teaspoon of salt, but we're gonna omit that today because a plant-based diet uh, is no added salt, no added sugar. So we have substitutes for that today. Uh, you won't even know that you're uh, we're missing though, so we're gonna go ahead and pulse this. And once we get it almost like grated cheese, we'll do a little bit more. And then, if you have a sifter, I like to go ahead and sift it out, make sure there's no large chunks. And like this. And you will see grated Parmesan cheese. I've been eating this for the last couple of years. Instead of Parmesan cheese, I put it on pizza, salad, um, really everything. Um, 
adds a lot of flavor. And I'll go ahead and put these last couple nuts in here. Try it again. Turn it up all the way. Should be good. All right. And that's it. Cashew Parmesan here. Um, go ahead and multiply this recipe that I sent you by two, and you will have enough for the next two recipes that we're making. So there we go. Just like Parmesan, right? All right. I'm going to set this to the side. Now we're going to make my family's Italian dressing. Um, this uh, tastes exactly uh, the way my grandmother made it. Um, who taught my mom all the recipes, um, who then taught my brother and myself. Um, this is uh, vinegar and garlic here. Um, let's go to the recipe. Uh, but before we mix everything together, uh, you might be thinking, how are you going to make Italian dressing with no oil? Um, I was thinking the same thing, but I found a substitute after uh, finding out there's other chefs and cooks that have been eating plant-based and vegan before myself. Um, and you, once you start digging around doing a little research, you'll find out that they've been doing it really well. And as you know now with uh, the market and all the different varieties of food that you can get, uh, it's a lot easier for us to eat this way. But uh, we're gonna add uh, one and a half cups of cannelloni beans and the half cup of water that you see on the recipe. And then we're just going to blend this and get it nice and creamy. And it is going to substitute for our oil. This is a little Nutribullet. I'm sure most of you have it. Any blender will work. See how we're looking here. Looks pretty good. So, this the side. I've got the beans and water here, and I've got all the dry seasoning here. I've got minced onion, uh, some garlic powder, uh, and then I also already put the cashew parmesan in here, some pepper and dried oregano. Uh, and then inside here is our vinegar, garlic, and I put maple syrup. I use maple syrup or date sugar instead of uh, regular white sugar. We'll just add all this into our bowl. Give it a little whisk. And add the beans. Now you're getting your uh, fiber. Not getting that uh, extra fat from the oil that you need. And you don't need any salt in this because the oil that you usually put in your dressing takes away so much flavor that you need to add that oil to uh, get that flavor back. But without the oil, you don't need the salt. So there you go. There's Italian dressing, oil-free. And when you put this on your salad, a little goes a long way. And I promise you, you won't know that you're missing the oil. Uh, it tastes just the way it tasted before. So the next recipe I'm going to show you is one of my favorites. Uh, again, I learned this uh, at my family's restaurant through my mom, who was taught, who my grandmother originally taught. Uh, we use whole milk ricotta, um, but here in New York, I got to work for some great cooks and chefs and figured out that you can make cheese out of nuts. And so I figured if you can make almond ricotta, why can't you bake it into a lasagna? I tried it out and uh, it actually tastes exactly the way I remember tasting it. I went ahead and blended the almonds uh, before you arrived to make this a little bit quicker. And uh, but I'll tell you how I did it, it's pretty simple. You get the almonds, uh, this recipe calls for one pound of almonds. And this recipe is going to make a half uh, hotel pan of lasagna, which might be pretty big. You can always freeze the pieces. You can cut this recipe in half and make it in a smaller pan. But this recipe calls for one pound of blanched almonds. Uh, the almonds, uh, I like to have the skin off of them and the broken pieces are just fine to save you some money. Uh, you, you soak that in some filter water or you can soak it in regular tap water. 
for about three or four hours beforehand, uh, drain the water, and then rinse the almonds, and then it goes into the Vitamix. Uh, I put three cups of almonds with one to one and a half cups of filtered water or tap water, and then uh, you blend it up, you get it to be as thick as possible, and make sure it's as smooth. You don't want any chunks of almonds in this, and if you've ever worked with Rigotha before, you know that uh, Rigotha looks pretty much just like this, um, and if you've ever tasted Rigotha before, you know that it doesn't really have much of a flavor. Um, so that's where we're gonna come in, and we're going to give it some flavor. The flavor that we're going to make with it today is the flavor my family makes with it, which is a bit of a sweeter regatta. Everyone's a little bit different. Uh, you can make it however you like, but uh, this is uh, how we make it. So this recipe regular calls for four eggs. And in this style of cooking, I found flaxseed, grounded flaxseed meal. If you watch Chef Carol on Sunday uh, through this webinar, you uh, learn that three tablespoons of water to one tablespoon of flaxseed meal uh, makes an egg. So in here, I have four tablespoons of flaxseed meal, and then here I have 12 tablespoons of water. Uh, this uh, acts just like an egg. It binds uh, my regatta. It uh, makes sure that after it cooks, the lasagna stays up firm, holds all my ingredients together, uh, as you can tell now, the flaxseed meal and the water are pretty separated, but in the next minute or two before I add it to our rigotha, you'll see it becomes more of a paste, and then once it mixes in with our uh, almonds, it will, uh, it will act just like an egg. So I have that. I have a fourth a cup of parsley. We could also use fresh parsley. Um, I have... A half a cup of cashew parmesan. We have a tablespoon of pepper or a pinch and a half. And then uh, instead of sugar, we're using maple syrup. It's going to give it that sweetness that I'm used to. Uh, and give this a little stir, mix it up a little bit. And I'm going to teach you. A really simple piece of advice. I'm going to give you a little piece of advice that my, my mom gave me when she was teaching me how to make this. And I thought that it wasn't very important. And now that I'm, I'm doing this uh, for a profession, I, I know that it's very important. And that is to taste everything. Um, so here we go. We've got more of like a paste. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in there. That is our egg. And I think the recipe calls for about a half a cup. This is uh, up to you. You can make a thicker regotha, or you can make it a little runnier, but a half a cup's about exactly what you need. And that, we'll mix it up a little more, give it a taste, and then we're gonna put this lasagna together. Um, so, so this lasagna is a perfect example of how you find substitution for the ingredients that you used to use. Eggs, I mean, how, how can you make a lasagna with no cheese, no eggs, no milk, no sugar? Well, here you go. We got almonds, we have maple syrup, we have flaxseed meal. Um, when you eat this lasagna, you'll, uh, you'll see that there's, there's no lack of flavor. Um, my dad, who uh, is very uh, kind of questionable about the things I make just because they're untraditional. Uh, loves this and uh, the reason he loves it is because he's the one that taught me how to make the sauce and so if you have a good sauce it's all about the sauce so I have our family sauce here a tomato sauce which you can make uh, or you can buy at the store there's actually some Anthony's East Side at stores around here in New York and we're working on getting it to other states uh, so we're gonna give everything a taste because the hardest part of making the lasagna is done we've got our almond regotha which took a little time, and then once you start blending up the nuts, it takes even more time. If you don't have a powerful blender and you can't make the almonds or you're allergic to almonds, you can use tofu. Uh, use firm tofu, and for this recipe, uh, I'd say around two pounds of tofu, maybe two and a half pounds. Um, just go ahead and uh, mash it up with a potato masher, add the same ingredients, and it will taste just as good. So. Got the regotha, 
We got mom's tomato sauce and we got the lasagna noodles. The hard part is over. We'll give everything a taste and we'll put this together and uh, get it cooking. So we got the ricotta. Very good. Tomato sauce. And we got the lasagna noodles. Uh, the lasagna noodles I also made earlier. My advice on making lasagna noodles uh, are to get the water boiling, of course. Follow the directions on the box is the easiest. Throw the lasagna noodles in, give it a little stir. Once the water comes back to a boil, turn it down to low, and then stir it a few times for the next 10 minutes. I think you would, I know you would rather have your lasagna noodles undercooked than overcooked because they're going to cook inside the pan on 400 degrees, which we're going to put our oven on now and uh, give it a little time to warm up. So let's make this lasagna. I'm going to make sure that you can see this. All right. We're going to start off the first layer uh, with one cup of tomato sauce. Nice layer there. It all moved around, make sure it's even. And then we're gonna start uh, with our lasagna noodles. We'll do three layers of lasagna noodles and three layers of cheese, three layers of sauce. The first layer of lasagna is going to go long ways. The second will go diagonal and then the third will finish long. I've got my cutting board here because I go ahead and make sure that the lasagna fits in there about as perfect as I possibly can. I even cut the edges to make it fit the best, just like that. And then we'll follow suit. Um, I think you could probably see this. We're just gonna kinda throw, overlapping maybe half of the lasagna noodle. You should maybe see that. There we go, that's what you want. So it's gonna probably be four, four pieces of lasagna just like that for our first layer. Go one more. And if you don't cook the lasagna noodles um, slowly, uh, you take a chance of, or you cook them too much, you take a chance of breaking them up and it makes this process just so much longer, which I definitely overcooked them before and cooked them too fast and, and put all the pieces together like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, still came out good, it just takes a little more time. So we're gonna follow with another cup of tomato sauce. And then we are going to make sure that it's even around all the noodles. And then our next layer is going to be one third of the almond cheese that we made. Okay. Make sure that's spread evenly, just like the sauce. And then our third layer is going to be sprinkles of the cashew parmesan that we made earlier. And then that's your first layer. We're gonna do this three more, or I'm sorry, two more times. We'll cover it with foil. It'll cook for about 45 minutes. Then, uh, depending on how hot your oven gets, uh, you check it, see how it's coming out. I'll show you how mine comes out here in a minute. Then you take the foil off, and we cook it for another 15 minutes to kind of get that. Anyone that loves lasagna knows that that crusty uh, edge, some of those corner pieces will give you is sometimes the best piece of lasagna. Uh, so. Take the foil off and cook it with no foil for about 10, 15 more minutes, just depending on how hot your oven gets. Everyone's oven will work a little bit different. Um, but here, my oven usually takes me, a, with a smaller pan like this, another 10, more, 10 minutes to, uh, to crisp it up. All right, we'll do one more piece, and then we'll, we'll make the next layer just like we did before. We'll, Follow with a little tomato sauce, get the noodles nice and soaked and marinated. And then we'll add another layer of cheese.
And this recipe will make nine pieces of lasagna. So it's a lot of pieces if you're having a lot of family over. Or you can do like we do. We, uh, we'll, we'll eat a couple pieces tonight, and then we'll, uh, we'll put the rest in the freezer, and it's an easy meal after uh, a long day. Maybe you don't have time to make yourself lunch or dinner. You pull this out. It's a nice, nice piece of lasagna. we got whole wheat pasta that we used here. Uh, once you cook this with the tomato sauce and the cheese and all the flavors, uh, the noodles, I uh, could, couldn't taste the difference that you had when we pasta. Um, so we sprinkle some cheese here, do one more layer, and then uh, we'll move to the final recipe, which is one of my favorites, it's chocolate mousse. Uh, so finish the lasagna noodles. Here. I don't know if you could hear, we have our, our window open here, and we're in New York City. Um, you can actually hear the birds chirping, which is a bit of a different sound from hearing all the trash trucks and horns all the time. It's kind of kind of a nice sound to hear the birds. Uh, I don't know if you could hear it through the computer screen. Um, let's see, last layer. Now, there's going to be one different step in this last layer, we're going to add the sauce last. I'll show you. So we do one more layer of sauce. Spread it out, make sure all the noodles have sauce. The last of the cheese. And the difference here, instead of sprinkling the Parmesan cheese on next, we're going to put one more layer of tomato sauce, another cup. And we'll mix that all together. And we'll finish with the sprinkle of cheese, just like before. All right. Wipe off these edges. It comes out looking just as good as it goes in. And that's it. So we got the oven on 400. You can put a cover on this if you don't have a cover for your pan. It'll work. Cover it up. And we're going to go in the oven for 45 minutes. Like this, and 45 minutes, check it, and it will come out looking like so. Uh, nice and crusty on the top. This is a half of a half pan, so uh, this, this recipe, I divided uh, the ingredients by two, and uh, this is what we came out with. I have a knife, and I'll show you how nice this holds up. Yeah, the first piece is always the, the toughest to get out. We've done it enough times you think you shouldn't have a problem. Cross your fingers. All right. Great. There we go. See one lasagna. That light's kind of weird, but there it is. And then don't be stingy with your sauce. You add a little parsley on there. Make some uh, meatballs, which we got a great recipe for meatballs. We could share another time. And that's it. We got lasagna. Um, if you have questions about that? Here in a few minutes, we can discuss that. Um, let's make this final recipe and make a little room here. Now, one day when I first started eating this way, I came home from work 
and my wife had a surprise for my birthday. It was chocolate mousse. Um, she didn't tell me what she made it of, but uh, it was unbelievable. I had no idea what it was made of, but it was fantastic. Come to find out, she made it with avocados, which I'm sure some of you, a lot of you probably have had something similar to this before. I'm going to show you a nice, easy way to make an avocado mousse. And um, finding vegan ganolis here in New York is kind of tough. So I found that Whole Foods has vegan wonton wrappers. Um, so if you get the wonton wrappers, you could do it the unhealthy way and fry it. Or you could do it this way. You can get a muffin pan like this. You turn your oven again on 400. And then you put your wonton wrappers inside muffin like so we're going to make sure you push all the way in the bottom and try to get it into a cup so that when it's cooked it will uh, hold your ganoli filling now we can make ganoli filling with the same almond uh, mixture that i made but this is uh this mousse one is something that a friend of mine makes uh, my family saint joseph table every year he makes chocolate pudding ganolis um, and they're just uh, one of my favorite times uh, to go down there and get this uh, chocolate ganoli so I decided today to try it out so we have this now we don't usually cook with oil but with these wontons you don't need oil but if you can just get a little brush and just a little brush on here just to kind of give it just just a little bit we'll go in the oven on 400 Show you when they come out. Let's make this avocado mousse real quick. Got an avocado. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just make this um, just one uh, divided by two. So I'm not gonna make the whole order. Take the seed out. Get a spoon. And put the avocado in your food processor or blender. You don't need anything too strong or powerful. Make sure your avocado is ripe. You don't want an avocado that's too not ripe enough. It won't work. So this one's been sitting for a couple days. Now to give it that chocolate mousse flavor, I have a fourth of a cup of cacao. I have, let me go to the recipe. I think we have three tablespoons of maple syrup. We have a fourth of a cup of almond milk or any non-dairy milk and go ahead and maybe add half of that fourth cup to start with. Once you blend it up, you can kind of fine. You have some vanilla. And that's it. Blender in here. This will be fun. Maybe blend this together, maybe. And with our shells, which we have here, and some mousse that we made. When they come out of the oven, sprinkle a little powdered sugar, and then some chocolate mousse. And it's a nice, easy dessert. It is a healthy dessert, too. Go figure. You can eat as many of these as you like, I think, and I think your doctor will be okay with it. There we go. Oh, cannoli. Uh, you can get a cherry, blueberry, raspberry for a little cone on top. Get some strawberries here. And finish it off with a little pie of sugar. And there we go, a ganoli cup for you. So we just made uh, four of my family's uh, recipes and uh, we used some untraditional ingredients, uh, but the finished product, uh, 
comes out just as good. And I think your family and friends will end up tasting this and uh, not know that there's anything missing from it. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming today. Uh, my website, which is probably somewhere on here, is Anthony's uh, East Side. Uh, you can go to that, Anthony'sEastSide.com, and uh, you can shoot me an email if uh, you have any other questions that maybe I don't answer for you today or when you're doing it, if something goes wrong, uh, please uh, shoot me an email, and I'd be happy to uh, help you out. Great. Anthony, this, this was awesome. We, ha we had a question come in earlier. Do you have a drive through window? No, we don't have a drive through window. Uh, we're working on it, though. Uh, yeah, and in the next, uh, next maybe six months or something, maybe we'll have a way that we can get food out to individuals instead of having to do large parties. We're working on it. We're in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Um, so there's really uh, no order too small right now. Um, so maybe uh, you could get a hold of us and we could figure out a way to, to, to get you some of our food. We do some of the markets around town in Brooklyn. They have some uh, different markets uh, once a month, and we participate in those and, and try to get our food out that way. So there is there is ways to uh, to taste our food without ordering a large pan. That's great. Yeah, there's some questions about the almond ricotta in particular. Um, are the almonds raw that you used for to make the that? Raw. Yeah, uh, I use the slivered. Um, I like to use them without the um, without the skin. You could use it with the skin, but it adds just a little bit more of uh, uh, the texture that I uh, don't really um, find in a regular ricotta. So I do it without the skin. Um, any kind of raw almonds without a skin is fine. The least expensive ones for me are the slivered. That's why I usually get those. Um, and Trader Joe's has them for, I think, uh, $3.60 for, uh, for a half a pound. So uh, that's, that's as good of price as you can get almost with uh, some of the restaurant discounts that yeah, that's amazing. And when you make it, um, obviously you used an almond milk today. Do you find that different kinds of plant milks add different flavor profiles, some that work, some that don't, or you're sort of agnostic on it? Yeah, no, I, I think the, um, the milk just adds a little bit more of the, the texture that we're searching for, the creaminess. Uh, the flavor, I think with the ingredients that we add, the flavor is going to come from that. So as long as you're using a neutral uh, non-dairy milk, you know, you don't want to use a sweetened one, make sure you use an unsweetened, uh, no flavor, no vanilla flavor, uh, no added sugar or anything. Uh, just for the texture is what we're adding the, uh, the non-dairy milk. Gotcha, yeah. And um, a question came in, if you substitute firm tofu for the almonds, do you still add flaxseed to the mix? I do, I do, but you, you know what, when I, have made it with tofu. Uh, I've used the flaxseed, but you might be able to not add the flaxseed. Um, but I, I feel like it helps bind it together and and, and um, keep it from falling all over your plate. But if you want to experiment, there's a good chance that the tofu won't need the flaxseed to hold it up. It's a great question. So great to experiment myself. Awesome. Uh, another question. Are the wonton cannolis better served right away or chilled? Actually, uh, the actual filling I put in the refrigerator after I blended them up, so I like them cold. But once you bake the wonton uh, wrappers, uh, they can sit throughout the day. I've, I've had them sit for din dinner parties for eight to ten hours before we serve them, and they taste just as good coming straight from the oven or eight to ten hours later. They don't uh, go stale like some chips do. Amazing. Thank you. Are there any other questions from our group? Uh, can you freeze the lasagna? Yes, definitely. Definitely, definitely. We'll, uh, we'll have a couple pieces tonight and we'll freeze the rest uh, and then just uh, take it out, let it thaw out, put it back in the oven, maybe on like 350 for another 15 minutes. Uh, just kind of keep pulling it out every five or 10 minutes and wait for your middle to get warmed up. You're not pre-cooking it. Uh, there's nothing in it that uh, needs to be cooked. It's just a matter of how you like your lasagna, what temperature you'll like it at. Great. Um, and do you, what kind of oil do you brush the wonton wrappers with? I use olive oil. Um, you can use any oil that you have. I, I cooked it earlier today without oil, and it's fine. The, the, the finished product, the taste of it, it tastes just fine. Um, but by adding a, a little bit of oil, it, it uh, 
might make it less crispy or less crunchier, but without oil, you just, just watch it. Maybe it'll only need about eight minutes to cook. And you might want to do just one at first uh, and test it out uh, because these things cook really fast. Uh, once they get hot and they're, they cook and they can burn pretty quick. So I would experiment with your oven and get it to the way you like it. Try it with oil, without oil, and see which way works best for you. Excellent. And when you finish off your lasagna on the top, you put you put an extra layer of, of the, the ricotta on the top. Was that to create the, um, like you said, the crunch to have it be a little bit uh, firmer on the top? Tell me more. Yeah, you know, I don't know what the reasoning for that is. The cheese, uh, the cheese definitely gets crispier on the top. Uh, and I don't know the reason uh, for that. I know that's the way that uh, we started cooking when my grandmother started making it uh, 40 years ago. And uh, exactly the way that, uh, that she made it then. So we just, when something's not broken, we just... We're not going to fix it, but um, some people don't add that extra layer of cheese and maybe they get a, a little different texture on top. But uh, yeah, each lasagna is different. That's great. And how about vegetables? Do you ever add veggies into your lasagna? That's a great question. I, I've got asked that a couple of times. I keep saying I'm going to experiment with them and add some, uh, some uh, different vegetables. The only one that I have used is spinach. I'll put spinach inside the ricotta and cook it that way. Um, but I haven't got brave enough yet to try zucchini and um, different uh, vegetables. But uh, I, I need to get on that and uh, find out. I know some people are making some amazing lasagnas with just vegetables. That's great. I only ask because we push vegetable eating in this group. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, um, and next time that we do this, I'll, I'll be more vegetable forward. That's okay. I think learning how to use the basics is really key here. And this is just so lovely and you made it look so effortless. Obviously not everybody's going to have all these amazing blender varieties in their kitchens, but um, we can do a lot with even just, just one. And I think you've given us many great things to try. So thank you so much, Anthony. My pleasure. Lena. Thank you so much for having me here today and everyone that showed up and friends and family from all over the country that's here. Uh, so nice to meet you today. I wish I could offer you uh, something to eat or drink right now. But, uh, awesome. Here. All right. So I just want to give some, give some closing announcements. Um, as an organization, Plant Powered Metro New York is running an ongoing web series uh, featuring all sorts of culinary experts like Chef Anthony and clinical experts. Um, tomorrow, our next program is with Dr. Ron Weiss. We're going to be talking about respiratory health, and he'll be answering questions about COVID-19. It's going to be a really relevant, uh, timely uh, conversation at noon tomorrow. So please do register on our website for that event and for all of the others coming up that might look interesting to you. Um, you can find it by clicking on uh, one of the buttons on our homepage. It should be easy to find. And if you register in advance, it just helps us um, to send you the information to make it easier for you to join uh, at the moment that things get started. Um, for those who are new to our organization, you can join our mailing list also on the website or join us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram and Meetup. And feel free to reach out to me um, with any ideas you have for how we can feature people like Anthony and other wonderful um, uh, local experts on whole food plant-based nutrition, whether the science or the practice of it in your communities uh, when we all sort of resume life as usual, hopefully in a few weeks or so. Um, with that, I wanna thank all of you and uh, send you off to your meals, hopefully uh, ready to eat after seeing Anthony's demo tonight. Thanks so much. Thank you.